Hi. Hi, this talk is on the rise and the fall of the public toilet room. Um, my name is Megan Dufresne, and um, there is an image of a toilet seat being illuminated um, by a light from above on the opening slide. I've worked with the Institute for Human-Centered Design for 13 years, and which during that time, I focused on enhancing people's experience with the built environment. During architecture graduate school, um, public toilet rooms were one of my chief focuses and my research um, during that time has been published in many locations and recognized by and recorded in Congress. And so today I wanted to talk about why public toilets are a necessity and then um, look at two different countries that have very different approaches to public toilets, the United States and Japan. And finally, I wanted to look forward um, to current positive trends in each country and around the world. So based on the C CDC, water, sanitation, hygiene, and wastewater all play a key role in public health. The lack of basic sanitation facilities can contaminate entire communities and water sources. This can increase the risk of infection for all individuals. Um, the health risks of improper sanitation can lead to a variety of health conditions, including diarrhea, tropical diseases, vector-borne diseases such as West Nile virus, stunting, antimicrobial resistance, um, and the image on the right side shows uh, a mother um, giving medicine to her young daughter. Antibiotic resistance is a serious public health concern um, that occurs when germs become able to defeat the drugs that are used to target them. In 2019, it was associated with nearly 5 million deaths. In the US, more than 2.8 million antimicrobial resistant infections occur each year and these can happen to people during any stage of life. When and if antibiotics and antifungals lose their effectiveness, then we lose the ability to treat infections. On the individual level, um, lack of access to public toilets um, leads to a variety of health conditions, um, urinary tract infections, bladder stretching and dysfunction, damage to pelvic floor muscles, constipation, impaction, and inflammation, kidney problems, to and toxic shock syndrome, and other vaginal illnesses with tampon use. The UN classifies access to sanitation as a basic human right. It seeks to provide investments in infrastructure, education, and hygiene in order to ensure universal access to safe and affordable drinking water for all by 2030. Uh, the UN established World Toilet Day in 20. 2001 with the goal of breaking taboos around toilets, ending the practice of open air defecation, improving access to sanitation among poor people and ensuring that women are not at risk for rape and abuse due to lack of privacy. The image on the top of the page 
shows some of the graphics uh, that were designed uh, for World Toilet Day, including a smiling roll of toilet paper, a toilet seat with a heart on it, and uh, the men and women's um, symbols. Unfortunately, children are often most at risk from uh, poor sanitation. Open defecation is one of the clearest forms of inequity, and around 1,000 children under the age of five die every day uh, due to unsafe water, sanitation, and hygiene. Um, in addition, we are in the middle of a water crisis, and so water, it's crucial that water sources are kept clean. UNICEF believes that growing up in a safe and clean environment is every child's right. The image um, on the right left side uh, shows a, a child drinking from um, a, a well. Another population uh, that is at risk uh, includes women and girls. Uh, one out of three women worldwide risk shame, harassment, or attack due to lack of safe toilets. In many cultures, women must refrain um, from drinking in order to avoid urination, and they must hold off defecating until after dark. Uh, the image on the right side uh, shows a group of smiling uh, girls. So according to the World Toilet Organization, currently 40% of the world's population lacks access to toilets. 419 million people still relieve themselves in the open and only 45% of schools in the least developed countries have adequate sanitation facilities. However, these conditions do not only exist abroad in third world countries. Um, one, of the most, one of the most powerful countries in the world, in the US, uh, we are undergoing a toilet crisis. Across the country, uh, there have been battles brewing over the lack of public restrooms. Um, LA's homeless population has reached more than 69,000. And uh, the LA County Health Department has said that the lack of hygiene and sanitation leaves residents at risk of contracting staph, meningitis, tuberculosis, hepatitis A, and typhus. Um, in addition, the homeless population on Skid Row is approximately 4,400 people, and Skid Row was uh, recorded to be 80 toilets short of what is required by the UN for a refugee camp. Um, across the country in New York City, there are only about four public toilets for every 100,000 people. Um, we have seen that activists have been working to get more public toilets for the population. However, oftentimes um, businesses fight back um, to reduce the count of public toilets due to worries of increased crime. So the UN, this is so serious that the UN um, did an assessment on the alarming lack of sanitation around the US in 2011. Uh, their studies showed that um, it largely impacted marginalized communities, such as communities of color. And um, due to open defecation and open urination laws, homeless people or anyone else who cannot find a restroom 
can be criminalized for simply responding to their biological needs. Uh, there is an image um, of a homeless person um, resting on a mattress uh, covered by a comforter on the left-hand side of the page. And the lack of public toilets uh, does not only affect homeless people. Um, it affects a variety of people, including people with disabilities, children, older adults, pregnant women, tourists, delivery and truck drivers, and taxi drivers. The image on the right side shows um, two tourists with bags and a map and a camera um, looking at directions around a town. And so how did we get here? Um, I wanted to describe the history of toilets in the United States a little bit. Um, the first toilets were built in the US in the late 19th century. The fixtures were standardized and designed from the measurements uh, of young male military soldiers. And so at this point, they were already leaving out a large majority of the population with a design, including um, senior citizens, uh, children, um, people with disabilities and women. Um, and in the beginning, the efforts focused on providing urinals for men. Uh, at the turn of the century, uh, due to increased immigration, um, washroom and toilet room construction accelerated. This was spurred by the belief that lower class people, including immigrants, are prone to spreading diseases. So there was a public restroom boom at this point, um, the final big boom of urban public restrooms uh, took place between 1918 and 1921, which coincided with the influenza pandemic and the end of World War I. Um, then in the 1930s, during the New Deal, efforts were focused on providing comfort stations in public parks. Um, and finally, as the country got more reliant on automobiles, um, more restrooms were provided along the interstate highway systems between the 1950s and the 1970s. And so unfortunately, restrooms have always illustrated inequality um, in the Jim Crow era South restrooms were segregated by race. Um, you can see a sign on the right side of the image that shows um, a, a directional sign for a colored waiting room in Rome, Georgia. Um, then in 1964, the Civil Rights Act was passed. This prohibited discrimination on the base of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. Um, the next um, group of people to have laws um, on restrooms um, put in place for them included people with disabilities. Um, the Architectural uh, Barriers Act uh, went into effect for um, federal buildings in 1968. And um, then in 1991, the um, Americans with Disabilities Act, which was based on the Civil Rights Act, was put into place. Uh, this, the ADA stated that facilities had to be readily accessible to and usable by people with disabilities. It provided a set of design standards um, that was mainly uh, to address manual wheelchair users within the toilet room. 
And um, unfortunately, uh, the ADA does fall short uh, for many uh, people with disabilities in toilet rooms. Um, and some of these populations include blind and low vision users, people of short stature, um, people who require assistance either from a spouse or a caregiver who is an opposite gender, um, people who need adult changing tables, people who use colostomy bags or catheters, um, people who use larger wheeled mobility devices, such as um, uh, power wheelchairs or scooters, and people with autism and sensory disorders. Uh, the image on the slide uh, shows a selfie taken by the accessibility activist and fashion icon, Sinead Burke. Um, and the caption that she wrote reads, can't reach the lock on the door, the hand dryer or the sink, but they have an excellent full length mirror. My new job, reviewing bathrooms. Um, additional um, health issues include the following uh, two issues. There is a high incidence of um, people who require more frequent access to restrooms. Um, based on the Cleveland Clinic, overactive bladder affects up to 30% of men and 40% of women. And um, this number is likely much higher as um, this is condition is considered embarrassing and is most likely underreported. Um, in addition, there are nearly one in 100 Americans who suffer from irritable bowel disease um, due to urgent restroom needs of this community, the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation passed the Restroom Access Act in 2005. And this is currently approved in 20 states. It provides members with an I can't wait card um, and they the members are able to show this to um, businesses that they go to and gain access to employee-only restrooms. Um, so this is not the best solution, but it is something that needs to be done due to the inadequate number of accessible toilet. Um, images on this slide include an image of a person uh, grabbing in a white t-shirt and jeans, grabbing um, their stomach and a roll of toilet paper in front of a toilet. And uh, the graphic for the We Can't Wait uh, card. So sexism with restrooms is something that was um, present from the very beginning. In the US, men's and women's restrooms were first regulated to be separate rooms in Massachusetts in 1887. However, women were often not provided with facilities or they were provided with less facilities than men were. Um, lack of toilets was claimed as a reason that women could not be initially admitted to Yale Medical School, Harvard Law School, and Virginia Military Institute as recently as 1996. Um, as men have traditionally worked in building and construction, women's needs have not been met with toilet room design. Even as of um, 2021, only 21% of licensed architects were women. Um, the image on the right side shows um, a, a long line, which is something that is we commonly see um, for women's toilet rooms. Um, and women 
typically have more reasons and need restrooms more frequently than men. And this is due to biological reasons such as pregnancy, menstruation, breastfeeding, and the frequency with which they care for children. Um, with timing, women typically take twice as long as men in the bathroom. And this is uh, not due to the fact that they are slower or wanting to hang out in the bathroom. It's um, due to the need to shed more clothing, maneuver in and out of stalls, and also use toilet paper. The image on the left side shows um, some uh, teenage girls um, washing their hands and waiting by the lavatory in a restroom. And so um, women's rights for a toilet room started to take off around 1974 when Assemblywoman March Fong Yu smashed a toilet on the Cap California Capitol steps in order to protest pay toilet inequity. Um, with pay toilets, urinals were um, free, but uh, toilet compartments uh, did cost around a dime to access. Um, this was considered uh, what was known as a pink tax, uh, a tax that illustrated an area where women had to pay more for products and services than men. After this point, um, pay toilets became outlawed nationwide, and the number of pay toilets was reduced from uh, 50,000 nationwide. Um, in more recent years, uh, potty parity le legislation was enacted piecemeal in many states. Um, again, California was the first state to enact the legislation legislation, which um, the, the legislation here was propelled by a state senator who was stuck waiting in a long line um, for his wife to use the restroom. And so um, potty parity legislation um, is typically based on ratios um, for um, the number of um, plumbing fixtures that are different in different states. Uh, some laws may require one um, women's fixture for every male fixture. Some states require two women's fixtures for every male fixture. And uh, there are a variety of different configurations. Um, the main problem with potty parity legislation is that it does not guarantee equal wait times for men and women. Um, also, the laws do not apply to existing buildings that are not being substantially renovated. And um, unfortunately, throughout the years, there has been backlash to these laws when men find themselves having to wait longer than women. And oftentimes the laws will be reversed. And so we've had progress on that um, issue. However, it, it's still important to note that um, for over half of the population, there is still no federal law providing equal access to public restrooms uh, for women. Um, there have been a lot of recent developments for restrooms uh, for the transgender population. Um, in 2013, there was a research study done at UCLA that found that 70% of transgender participants experienced verbal or physical assaults related to restrooms. Um, then from 2014 to 2016, uh, North Carolina, Texas, and other states passed legislation saying that people must use the bathroom that complied with their birth gender. 
um, as a reaction to this um, in, in, in 2016, President Obama issued a directive to allow transgender students to use bathrooms aligning with their gender identity. Uh, any schools that um, did not comply would risk lawsuits and loss of federal funding. Um, after this, in 2017, President Trump revoked the Obama era interpretation, although uh, since this time, several federal courts um, have disagreed with Trump. Um, so we are now seeing that many new facilities are designing restrooms with the transgender population in mind. The image on the right-hand side shows um, a sign for an all-gender restroom. And so currently, um, there has been a great demise of public restrooms in the United States. Um, and this is due to maintenance issues, um, safety issues, uh, especially in urban areas, and um, lack of revenue along interstate highways. Um, so there's a growing trend of closing public toilet facilities. Um, in New York City, um, 472 subway stations were locked due to fear of crime, drug use, and sexual encounters. And uh, we have seen this happen in other states as well. Um, and additional public restrooms were closed across the country due to safety concerns from 9-11. Um, so the image above shows um, a, um, a toilet room that is in ruins with peeling paint and an open window. Next, I was going to talk about restroom design in Japan. Uh, Japan is a hospitality culture that prides itself on omatenashi. Uh, this translates um, to the phrase, to wholeheartedly look after a guest. Uh, there is also a fear among um, Japanese people of inconveniencing others. And so um, they will um, be sure to clean up after themselves after using the um, bathroom so that they don't inconvenience others. Uh, at a very young age, uh, Japanese school children are trained to clean um, the, school, the whole school, including the toilet rooms each day. And so this responsibility doesn't fall on janitors um, and it brings respect and responsibility for keeping toilet rooms clean uh, to children at a young age. Um, finally, corporate greed is much more prevalent in the US than in Japan. Um, in Japan, people pride themselves on creating bathrooms that people can enjoy um, and not just providing um, pretty much the basics that are required by code. Um, in addition, um, people work together to keep the bathrooms clean. Uh, there is an overall concern for cleanliness, um, more so in Japan than in the United States. The image on uh, the left side shows um, a group of um, Japanese school children with yellow hats walking down the street. So the history of toilets in Japan um, prior to um, the 1980s, most toilets were not connected to a sewer system. Um, instead, night soil was connected by sanitation worker. And so this was a complex recycling solution um, that was all based on profit. Uh, the waste material from um, these uh, toilets were considered something of value 
that could be used as fertilizer within agriculture. Um, toilets began to change in design after uh, World War II um, and Western style toilets spread in Japan in the 1960s. Um, a current uh, toilet museum in Japan has uh, General MacArthur's uh, toilet uh, on display. The image in this um, on the slide shows a squat toilet um, that uh, is located in Tokyo, and uh, many people, uh, in, some people in Japan, prefer squat toilets, um, and so that they don't need to touch any surfaces. Um, when they're using the toilet. So oftentimes these will be an option in all toilet rooms. And so after this point, there was really a public toilet re revolution. Um, the role of the public toilet was um, brought into prominence in the 1980s during a time of economic recovery. Um, prior to this point, toilets were considered taboo. Um, the success of the restroom was tied to two key populations. Um, first, they were it was tied to the social advancement of women. And then uh, in 2000, with the growth of the aging population, um, toilet rooms were determined to to be needed, needed to be accessible by the elderly, um, people with disabilities and people with children. And so um, in 2023, it was found that more than, it was found that one in 10 people in Japan are aged 80 or older, and with age there comes uh, more disabilities. Uh, these are, there are two images on the slide. Um, the first image shows um, a large tan and brown toilet room that has um, a variety of different features, including um, a lavatory a toilet with, with a variety of grab bars, an ostomy sink, and um, an adult changing table. Uh, the image on the bottom right uh, is um, taken inside of a translucent glass toilet that is located within a park in Tokyo. And so um, in Japan, they have um, found ways for toilet rooms to enhance culture. Um, toilets are provided um, on streets, in parks, in train stations, shopping centers, uh, tourist attractions, convenience stores, and many more places. Um, because of this, people are able to spend longer amounts of time traveling and uh, within the cities. Uh, I have two more pictures of toilet rooms. The top image shows um, a toilet room with a tra translucent um, wall uh, and the shadow of a tree outside of the toilet room. And this is from a park in Tokyo. Um, the second image shows um, a the design of um, a women's toilet room that is in a rest stop in Tokyo Bay. Um, the lavatories at the back of the image um, provide views out to the ocean. And so design is um, really considered um, in order to enhance uh, the user's experience um, within toilet rooms in Japan. Additionally, um, Japan is focused on providing toilets for emergency preparedness. Uh, due to the prevalence of earthquakes, many elevators in Japan have toilets in them. You can see this um, on the top uh, image. 
It's um, labeled as an emergency preparedness kit. Um, they also provide um, products such as portable toilet kits um, for the public to keep in their households in case of disasters. And these are in many um, stores. Uh, in the bottom image, you can see um, a package for a mobile pocket toilet. And so in the small amount of time that public restrooms have been developed in Japan, they have achieved worldwide recognition for their design, cleanliness, high-tech features, and their convenience. Um, this quote is from Jimmy Kimmel. After he recently traveled to Japan, he writes, um, after traveling to Japan, I realized that this place, this USA, we're always chanting about, it is a filthy and disgusting country. I've been home 36 hours. I've never felt dirtier. I can't imagine what Japanese people must think of us. Oh, the garbage people. Yes, the Americans, garbage, yes. And so um, contrasting um, West and East views of um, how toilet rooms are portrayed in um, cinema. Uh, first in the US, bathrooms are commonly used as sets for violence or horror. And we can see this in Psycho, Full Metal Jacket, Casino Royale, and Jurassic Park. Um, there's an image of a girl screaming at the top of the slide. Um, meanwhile, uh, in Japan, um, there was a recent movie called Perfect Days, um, directed by a German um, film director, Wim Wenders. And it, sir, it, the film illustrates how fulfilling um, a professional toilet cleaner's life is. Um, this um, movie has added to a growing industry of toy toilet tourism around um, Japan. And um, one of the uh, toilets featured in this movie is um, this um, box toilet. Um, it has an aqua, um, lime green, and um, light blue uh, glass toilet that um, they are clear until somebody goes into them and then the glass will change to be opaque. So looking forward, um, designing public toilets is a very difficult task. Um, it's the last of private spaces that are within the public realm. Um, we need to consider that users will be all ages, all income levels, all ability levels. They'll speak different languages, come from different cultures, have different customs, and practice different hygiene. Um, individuals are often anonymous. They don't follow up on their experiences, and so it can be hard to predict behavior. Uh, in addition, uh, especially in the U.S., uh, criminal behavior in restrooms is also a key consideration that compounds everything. The image on this slide shows a um, woman with a stroller in Japan waiting uh, for an accessible uh, single-user toilet room in a subway station. And so the key takeaway that I want you to get from this presentation is that toilets affect everyone. An average person spends over two years inside of a bathroom. We need to have an adequate number of clean and safe public restrooms for all. Um, so we found that there are good examples from both countries and interesting uh, toilet organizations around the world. 
um, within the U.S. Um, some of the urban public toilets uh, that have been provided include include the Portland Loo. Um, the Portland Loo was developed in um, Portland, Oregon. It is an all gender um, anti graffiti uh, unit with crime resistant features that are easy to clean. It has open louvers provided at the base of the unit, um, which helps to prevent ambush. Uh, the cost for each of these units is $100,000, and they are powered by electrical panels. Um, the second solution uh, that we have is by the French company, uh, JC Deco. It's um, a self-cleaning um, toilet that is often paid through advertising. Uh, it looks similar to the image that is shown on the right side of the page. Um, I guess the main issue, a couple of the main issues with this is that um, they find that accessible versions often have concerns for drug deals and illicit sex. Um, for this reason, they are considering um, providing magnetic cards for people with disabilities. Um, in addition, um, the self-cleaning device has found, uh, has caused problems um, for people with disabilities who may take longer um, times to use the restroom uh, as um, many of these toilets have uh, automatic timers that go off before they um, force the user out onto the street and start the self-cleaning process. Um, the most humane um, solution seems to be the pit stop program uh, from San Francisco. Uh, this program hires paid ambassadors who would be formally incarcerated or homeless people to monitor and clean public toilets. Uh, they are also trained in de-escalation strategies around toilet rooms. Um, the main downside to this solution is that the toilet rooms um, cannot be open 24 uh, seven. So this is a um, restroom in Japan um, that I showed a, a little earlier. Um, it's known as Omi Hotaru. It's uh, at the time it was built, it was the only rest area shopping center that was located under the ocean in Tokyo Bay. Um, the designers, um, Gondola and Junko Kobayashi, um, took full advantage of the gorgeous water views to draw the public into the restrooms. And so you can see in the top um, image, the urinals in the men's room have a view of the ocean. Um, in addition, um, in order to um, improve the experience of users, uh, children's, um, Bathroom pods were provided, um, and um, there are accessible men's and women's um, facilities. Uh, you can see the layout of the facility in the second image at the bottom, and um, it should be noted that none of these um, restrooms entrances have doors, and so that helps with um, not... Um, having to need, ha having to touch as many surfaces when you're entering and exiting the restroom. Um, we've, in the US, we've seen that a lot of transportation facilities are um, improving restrooms. Um, one of them is LaGuardia Airport, which has recently undergone um, a renovation. Uh, you can see in the first photo, uh, there are orchids and um, great lighting provided at lavatories. Um, 
there's the restrooms are um, more spacious than they have been in the past and consider um, people with luggage who are traveling um, with within individual stalls. Um, there are typically two sets of hooks, um, one that is higher and one that complies with the ADA to be within reach range. Um, the stalls also have shelves in them. You can see in the second image on the top, uh, a shelf that is located over a toilet paper dispenser, which uh, many people can find helpful within um, toilet rooms. Additionally, um, these the LaGuardia uh, bathrooms provide um, blade wayfinding signs and toilet room cleanliness signs that the public can rate. Um, our, my second example is from Chicago Union Station. Uh, they recently um, had added new accessible shower rooms um, to the terminal, um, and they even provide towels by the front desk. It's um, very helpful, I think, for travelers who've been on a train for a long time um, to be able to have the option to shower during their travels. Um, fi the final example is from Baltimore Washington International Airport. Um, they undertook uh, a large renovation uh, to provide larger stalls, privacy dividers at urinals, nursing rooms, adult changing tables, family restrooms, and uh, restroom indicator lights. And you can see the indicator lights um, on the bottom image on the right side, uh, they glow red when the uh, stall is in use or green if it is vacant. And this helps move people quicker through the restroom and um, it, it avoids uh, people having to, need, having to look underneath the stall to see if it's occupied. Um, in Japan, there are a variety of um, amazing amenities um, within Japanese toilet rooms. Uh, they are constantly trying to address different needs that users may have. Um, so in the first image at the top, this shows a small um, children's toilet room um, stall, and it, it allows parents to supervise the children over the partition of the toilet uh, and also allows um, children to get used to using a toilet partition. You can also see a shelf is provided in this small unit, um, which of course is uh, great for storage. Um, in addition, um, in Japan, the accessible uh, toilet rooms often have ostomy sinks. Uh, many toilet rooms will provide an option for a changing board, which will be something you could fold down from the wall and stand on um, if you want to change your clothes or change your shoes so that you're not putting your feet um, directly on the bathroom floor. Um, they also provide adult changing tables in many um, of the accessible bathrooms. Uh, they consider um, the importance of providing grab bars at sinks and urinals as um, people who have difficulty walking are 10 times more common than people um, who use wheelchairs. Um, there are also cane holders provided within um, toilet stalls so that um, people who use canes can secure their cane and don't have it falling on the floor when they're using the toilet. Um, I think one of the most unique things I saw was a full height drying facility. Uh, this was in Shibuya Hikari. It's uh, the first picture on the bottom uh, and um, it was uh, 
claim that this facility is to help blow off um, allergens off of people's clothing um, and to help with that. Uh, we've also seen one um, at a zoo in San Diego. And so that may be something that um, becomes more common. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the US, um, in Japan, they often have uh, clear indicators of available stalls. You can see this um, at the picture on the bottom right. Um, with In Japan, they are typically more modest uh, than people in the US. And so the stall doors um, and compartments will go down to the floor. Um, and so it's you wouldn't be able to check to see if somebody were in the restroom. And so they'll provide a number of features um, to let you know uh, where the accessible, where the um, open restrooms are. They also provide tactile maps of restrooms. So this image, the first image is a tactile map of the Umahotaru restroom that I showed you earlier that was on um, in the middle of Tokyo Bay. You can see how open the restroom is. Um, design of the restroom um, is also different um, in um, Japan where that they feel that designing on the diagonal allows um, people to be able to see which restrooms are open and available rather than designing with uh, a straight line as is typical in the US. And so with this um, tactile map, they will um, provide the shape of to toilets, lavatories, urinals, um, and uh, also the round um, children's uh, toilet rooms so that um, people can who are blind or low vision can determine where everything is located. Um, it's also common to see makeup areas in bathrooms in Japan. And this is illustrated by the slide um, on the bottom right side. And uh, it's helpful um, to have this area so that women aren't all using the lavatories or, you know, getting um, their um, materials wet by putting on makeup over the lavatories. Um, we also see that many restrooms provide nurseries, breastfeeding areas. Um, the toilets typically always have bidets and dryers and heated toilet seats. Um, they often have a sound masker within the toilet stalls that um, that uh, occupants can turn on and have sounds of the ocean um, in order to mask what they may be doing in the toilets. Um, finally, they provide baby holders as an option in many stalls. You can see um, in the bottom image on the bottom left side, this is an example of the baby holder. You can also see the cane holder next to the baby holder and next to a shelf um, that can be used by people in that same image. Um, and the only image I didn't talk about is the image on the top um, right side. This is an accessible uh, restroom that provides a variety of options. It's um, a highway rest stop uh, restroom. And so they have a curtain that you could draw in addition to a door, a adult changing table, a urinal, um, and uh, a toilet with a variety of um, grab bar options. So the Tokyo um, Toilet Project is um, one of the most recent um, things that um, was done in Tokyo. And uh, the purpose of it was to redefine the image of the toilet. 
Uh, they wanted to create toilets that weren't a place to avoid, but a destination that people wanted to visit. And so um, they had world famous architects um, and designers work on 17 public toilets in the Shibuya area around Tokyo. Uh, the toilets were each designed to celebrate diversity and individuality and facilities uh, were provided for women, children, families, and people with a variety of disabilities. Um, the facilities were are currently maintained uh, by uh, the um, Nippon Foundation, Shibuya City Government, and Shibuya uh, Tourist Organization. Um, so by creating world famous architects to create these and then having a world famous director and Oscar nominated film about these toilet rooms, um, they are now giving tours of these toilet rooms for a, a prop, approximately $30 um, per person and there's great interest in them. Um, I have two images that I took of um, two of these facilities. Uh, the top image shows a white building with um, an interesting uh, Clara story over um, at the top of the building and um, a strangely sloped roof. This is a bathroom that was designed by uh, the architect Fumeheku Maki. It has a tree in the middle of the bathroom and it's um, completely open to outside. The second image is um, a uh, kind of futuristic spaceship looking uh, bathroom with metal louvers uh, that is illuminated at light. It was designed by um, architect Tadao Ando. And so I wanted to talk about a couple of organizations that um, have been championing the issue of public toilets. Uh, first of all, there's the um, Japan Toilet Association. This was founded in 1985. The original aim was to review and give awards for public toilets. Um, the organization worked to create a toilet culture and improve social issues related to toilets. Um, their main goal is um, to create the best toilets in Japan in schools, parks, healthcare, sightseeing areas, and disaster areas. In um, the US, the American Restroom Association was founded in 2005. Uh, they have described their goal as nothing less than a full-scale transformation in this country so that our public restrooms are no longer a laughing stock among the developed world. Um, the organization has successfully advocated for revisions to the International Plumbing Code. They've provided congressional testimony on gender equity in federal building public restrooms. They've published guidance on, on restroom considerations regarding COVID-19 and for school toilet rooms. Uh, the image on the right side um, is from their website. Um, it has a woman um, um, clutching her legs and with the slogan, what can I do about dirty, closed or inaccessible public facilities? The next organization that I wanted to talk about is Toilets for All. Um, they are a Swiss foundation that is dedicated to providing access to clean and dignified toilets for the world population. They um, have found that all 17 UN strategic development goals and 130 
of the 169 UN strategic development targets have synergies with sanitation. Um, they also provide a knowledge exchange website about sanitation in schools. Uh, finally, um, the World Toilet Organization um, believes in a world with a clean, safe toilet for everyone, everywhere, and at all times. Uh, this organization was founded in 2001 to promote um, open international dialogue around toilets and the sanitation crisis. Um, they are a global nonprofit that is committed to improving sanitation conditions worldwide. Their founder, Jack Sim, was instrumental in uh, gathering many countries to support the establishment of World Toilet Day, World, the World Toilet Summit, and World Toilet College. In closing, uh, we cannot ignore the facts. It is critical to the health and vitality of our cities and towns uh, to provide public toilet facilities. Instead of sweeping the importance of this under the rug, as is commonplace, we all need to join together uh, to ensure that these necessary spaces allow for the dignity, equity, health, and social inclusion of all. Thank you. And I've provided a few uh, online references um, where you can learn more about the different resources that I've mentioned during this presentation. Thank you.